An In-Depth Look at a Line, Lesson 3. My name is Barry Kimball. This lesson will demonstrate how to use the Align tool to establish continuity between two surfaces. Utilize various options to control the alignment results and how to achieve higher levels of continuity. In this lesson, we'll discuss how to establish continuity and modify surfaces in steps to achieve continuity. The key learning objectives are using the Accept option, when to use the Revert and Restore options, using the Query Edit tool, and controlling CV structures. In this lesson, we're going to discuss how the Revert, Restore, and Accept buttons can be used to control the alignment. We're, for this demo, we're going to use these two simple surfaces and our goal is to modify this small surface to match the larger surface and be curvature continuous and have this edge be the shape of this line and this edge be the shape of this line approximately. So to do that we'll set up a basic alignment of this squares edge to this one. We'll turn the partial on and I'm going to set the positional influence to 1 so that the system or the software controls where the control vertices are. I'll slide this end to where I would like it and the start to where I would like it. Now we'll turn the blending on and go to 4 extra rows so we'll leave the end in its location at position. Well, that looks pretty good. So I'd like to see if we have curvature continuity before I make any changes. So I'm going to ask to check for curvature. And we have some errors there. So I'm going to turn the curvature on. And we get an alignment result. So it is curvature continuous, but we've kind of lost our, our edge linear shape. I'll explain why that is. When you turn you know this to this to edge this is in straight line this edge is also in line even though it's not at a boundary it's in line with UV space if I set this to skew and this edge to skew we really don't see any change we see a tiny bit of change if I toggle this back and forth but not that much the system is basing that skew location on where the control vertices were before we made any alignment. So if you think of the, the attitude of these control vertices, I'm going to revert so it's like we made no alignment. This is their attitude. Okay. So if I duplicated a curve on this edge just to demonstrate how it, how it works, and I moved it over here, and then we set that alignment up again, and I'm going to turn this to position so it's just like before. We got our positional influence set to 1. I'm going to turn the blending on, put in four rows, move these points to where I would like them, and then I ask for curvature. See it moves these CVs to where they were before we started. That's its goal. Now it's not exact because it had to achieve curvature continuity. If we turn this to, and because we have edge on, it's modifying that edge shape. If we turn this to skew, they move to where they were before we made any alignment. And if we rotate here, all the software has done is moved them down until it achieved curvature continuity. So we need a, a way to tell the software, if I turn this back to position, and we'll set it back to where it was before we made this change. I need a, a way to tell the software this is the location where I would like you to continue and achieve curvature continuity. Use this CV positions as your base. So to do that we use the accept button. So I'll select accept. It locks in those positions. Now when I switch to curvature they're moved to position from that spot. Now this side we didn't have skew on so if I switch to skew it goes back to where we hit the accept button. A couple other things to note. We had this blending extra rows set to 4. 
now that we have adjusted the level of continuity and we're using two rows for tangent and curvature, it's had to drop one row off because it doesn't exist. And I'd like to bring that back down to two so that the end stays positioned. Okay. Now let's say we wanted to make another design change and we wanted to make this edge move in this direction. So I could slide this over, right? but it's maintaining the original skew. I could then use this manipulator that we discussed before and direct it back this way to try and get it so it's linear and that will work. But I'm going to use control Z and undo that because we can undo operations inside the align function. What I'm going to do now is hit accept so it accepts those locations, switch this back to position, I'll modify my extra row so we're getting all the rows we want. Now I can slide this row around until I get the, the shape that I want. It's going to be you know, kind of a linear taper based on our blend factor. I'll set this so that these two edges look parallel. I'll accept that location and then switch to curvature. Now it's used those as their base point and we have a kind of a linear edge. And we could make little adjustments here if we wanted but control Z, I, I don't want to do that. Now, if I wanted to get back to the previous position and I hit control Z right now, it's not doing anything because control Z and undo won't go past a point where I hit accept. So to go prior to an accept, you hit the restore button. So that goes to right before I hit accept when we wanted to achieve curvature. And you can see now it's set to position. If I hit restore one more time, it goes back to before that accepted location, which we had curvature continuity. And if I hit it restore one more time, it brings us back to our first place, our first movement that we made. How do I know this is the first movement? Because the restore button has now turned to revert, which means undo all of my alignments. So I'm going to revert just so I can show you this one, one more time. I'll set up my alignment between this surface and this edge. I'll turn my blending on. I'll slide to this point and this point. I need my positional influence set to 1. I'll accept that location and I'll switch to curvature. Now I can turn my skew on and I get the result that I want. Now I'd like to discuss another scenario where the align function can be used to control CV structures. So we'll close this and open another set of surfaces. So here we have a set of surfaces that you can see where they kind of establish themselves from. All right, and we want to make some modifications to these, or we need to make some modifications to these. So the reason we need to make some modifications is if we evaluate the continuity between these surfaces, you can see we have some curvature issues. All right, so I'm going to set up an alignment between this surface to be modified and this driving surface. And you can see we get our curvature continuity. And there's not much of a change to the CVs. If I change this to position and we look at where the curvature and tangency are, it's not a lot of change. If we go to tangent, very little change in curvature. Okay. So we'll check we'll do this side now. So I'll pick nothing and establish an alignment between this edge to be modified and this surface and we get a proper alignment. So we could stop here because we have our continuity. Now I'd, I'd like you not to worry about these other surfaces right now because we can you know in the surfacing um, methods that are used 
you have to go back and forth sometimes a little modification here then match it back in there a little modification here and and go back and forth so that at some time we might lose a little bit of continuity with this surface or with this surface but we have to work our way around and get these surfaces tuned to exactly the shapes that we want you can see right here this surface sits in space so the next modification I'm going to show would be fine so we'll look down this edge now I'm going to use the query edit function to try and get the history from this from this alignment and it got the history from the other side so this is an opportunity we can use to show how the query edit can access the history of two alignments and how it decides which one it will access it decides based on which end you pick on so if I pick on this side that is aligned it gives me this side's alignment if I pick on this side with query edit it picks this side's alignment fairly easy and straightforward so I'll query edit this side now I need to modify where this point is because I kinda don't I don't really like that shape so to make that modification I can't really do it within the align function and some other modifications that I, I can kinda see if I look at these rows of CVs I can kinda see that this goes down and then up well that's gonna put a low spot in that surface and maybe I don't like how this straight this is and it's got a little kink right here so I want to make some modifications to this and I'll show how the history supports this alignment and how you can fine-tune these surfaces um, kind of using the align so I'll pick nothing to do this I need to turn on I'm going to turn a couple things on here I'm going to turn on a draw style I'm going to turn the boundaries to double so they're a little more vibrant and turn my CVs so that they'll be a little bigger so you can see what I'm going to move. Another thing I'd like to show that I've had set up in previous videos, but I'd like to show how that's set up, is the wireframe anti-aliasing, and I'm going to set that to 2. And that gives us a little smoother boundary. Okay. Now I'll turn on the control panel because we need access to some CV movement tools that I like to use from the control panel versus the transform know movement tools I, I like how these work so I'm gonna go to the slide and select this surface and its CVs turn on and I'd like to make this edge look a little better basically this edge is too linear at the end and it's forcing this edge to match it so why is it forcing that edge to match it if I query at it and select this we have edge turned on if I switch that to skew it allows it to stay where it was but it's skewed so I'm gonna set this to be edge because I'd like that to be a nice collinear alignment between all these surfaces one thing that I can you know use the collinear alignment for which is what edge gives me is to check these the ends of these surfaces because they'll force their shape into this surface so I can see if this patch and this surface and I, I, I call patch and surface I use those terms um, often they mean the same thing um, I can tell if this surface and this surface are meshing well together if they're flowing well together and in this case I see over here that it's not flowing that well together so we'll use this CV slide and I'll grab a control vertice on this surface and as I slide this control vertice I can see what happens to the control vertices that are constrained by the alignment okay so I'll I'll move that a little bit and now that gives me a nice CV flow along that edge next I'm gonna look over here we have some strange you know undulations in these control vertices so I'm going to take a normal UV and I'm gonna move this CV down and up now you can see it's it's getting confused it's adding in control vertices well the reason for that is we've discussed previously and I'd like to set that option just and this is all these are just to show you how each of these options matters and specifically what they do so if I set this position influence to one that's gonna that's gonna help me that's going to uh, help control these CVs and where they are so I will again grab this CV 
and we'll make a slight modification here and you can see now it's got since the system is controlling where the CVs are and it's a raw edge or a natural boundary it gives me nice uh, nice control over these control vertices I'll pick nothing I'm gonna grab a CV on this end and I'll as I pull this CV down it's gonna pull this CV down and this is also nice for for new users now on this side we have the same thing so I, I as I'm moving it you see it's updating on, on this side and it's adding in spans on this side we need to set our positional influence to one also okay now as I was mentioning for new users when you are modifying these control vertices a lot of times people don't understand what movement is going to force modification into another surface so with the line and with the history it's pretty clear how movement of this CV affects where the other CVs are going to go. So if you're trying to make these kind of fine-tuning movements here, you can use uh, the history to help with that. And I'll slide, maybe I'll slide this CV over this way a little bit just to round that out. And as I select on new surfaces, right, the CVs get turned on. I don't want to talk too much about the control panel, but all these things are helpful and we'll slide this a little bit and now I can get some nice smooth flow in these CVs okay in this lesson you learned how the align function can be used in steps to achieve new surface shapes as well as continuity and how to use the query edit function to access alignment history